I don't often make videos, but I have felt compelled over the last several weeks and months that <clears throat> this video needs to be made. I'm not an expert at making videos, and so I usually avoid making them unless I feel really strongly that I need to, and then I, I make some kind of an attempt as I'm doing now. There's so much going on in the world. Um, there is so much trouble, there is so much dismay, there are so many people um, talking about the future and about the possibilities of disaster that are going to come upon mankind. Many people are prophesying, many people are having visions, many people who have no idea of events taking place in the world are having dreams um, with regard to events that are taking place and when people suddenly have dreams who have no idea of, of these events then they should be taken note of. I'm making this video as an attempt to, to warn people, to encourage people to not be skeptical to not laugh and to mock and to scorn those who are issuing the warning voice but to prepare themselves and their families for the events which will surely come upon this earth. Imagine a time when there is no food in the shops, there is no water in the taps, it is freezing cold, there is no electricity, but you have prepared, you have blankets, you have food, and you have water and you have a safe place for your family. Won't you feel good? Won't you feel relieved that you've been able to do something that you have prepared in a small way to, to get through uh, these terrible times? I'm going to talk about a lady who, um, who died for several hours and during this death experience she had a she had a vision in which she saw many things i'm only going to talk about a small fraction of what she did see and what she did experience and i will talk about that portion of the future events which she saw i will also speak about others who have had uh, similar visions and dreams the lady you're looking at her name is Sarah Minette. Sarah had her, her death experience in 1979 and for many years told only a few people. Then in 19, 19, 1988, when she nearly died a second time, she felt strongly that she needed to tell more people of her experience, including the informa information of what she saw happening in the future. Sarah is on a videotape as early as 1995 talking about tall buildings in New York falling down, an economic collapse in the United States and around the world, a devastating biological attack on the United States and other events. At the time Sarah had her experience, she was not a member of any organized religion. In fact, though raised as a Christian, she had come to be an agnostic, believing that there was probably not a God. She therefore didn't care about religion, religious questions or concerns. Obviously this experience she had changed all that, but we will not be talking about those events which brought her to that place of a belief in God and understanding. We will focus on those future events which she saw um, when she died. As I begin to talk about those events which Sarah saw, I'd like to um, let you know that these events, as I explain them, may not be in chronological order. And so, as I explain them one by one, um, it may be that the one I explain forth will be the one that comes first. They are not in any chronological order, although there is some order to them. 
The first one is Israel is attacked and a world war begins. And Sarah Manette says, I'm not familiar with the geography of the world, but as I looked at the various lands, I instinctively knew what countries they were. Looking at the Middle East, I watched as a missile flew from Libya and hit Israel. The mushroom cloud that resulted from the blast was visible, and I knew that the missile contained a nuclear bomb. I was aware that those responsible for the missile were Iranian, but the missile had been hidden and fired from within the borders of Libya. Almost immediately, other missiles began flying from one country to another, quickly spreading war around the world. I also saw that many nuclear explosions did not come from missiles, but from bombs of some kind on the ground. My focus then changed from the Middle East to the United States, and I stood and I understood that I was about to see some of the things that would lead to the nuclear holocaust that I just witnessed. In this segment, Sarah talks about tall buildings in New York which fall. As I looked upon the continent of North America, I zeroed in on the East Coast and then on New York specifically. I saw New York City with all its people and its buildings. Then I saw some tall buildings crashing to the earth, surrounded by tremendous billows of smoke, dust and debris. I zoomed in closer into the smoke and particles falling and saw a woman holding a little girl's hand and running from the crashing buildings. The woman had long dark hair hanging past her shoulders and curled inward slightly. She wore a beige business suit, heels of a slightly darker color, perhaps tan, and she was not wearing glasses. The little girl appeared to be six or seven years old with short brown hair reaching below her chin and cut in a type of page boy look. They ran together holding hands and trying to escape from the falling buildings. As they ran through the heavy smoke and dust, they were forced to let go of their hands and became separated. The child was terrified and I could hear her screaming, Mommy, Mommy, over and over again. I don't know their outcome if they lived or died, but I can still see the face of the woman clearly and could easily identify her from the photo or describe her to a sketch artist. I wondered if an earthquake had caused the building's fall and felt impressed that the answer was no. However, I was not given any indication as to the cause of destruction. As I watched the attack on the World Trade Centers on September 11, 2001, it was like watching a rerun. The next section is four cities attacked with disease. I then saw a man in the middle of a crowd of people and dropped what seemed like a quart jar full of liquid. The jar broke and the liquid spread. I understood that the people nearby had become infected with a disease from the liquid, and they didn't even know it. A day or two later, people became sick and started dying. I saw that this would happen in four particular cities, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Salt Lake City. The disease started with white blisters, some of the size of a dime, appearing on the hands, arms, and faces of the victims. The blisters quickly developed into white sores, apparently filled with pus. Though <clears throat> those with the disease would stumble around for weeks and fall over dead. I also saw other people with a flu-like virus that spread more quickly than the first disease. The victims had blood coming from their nose, mouth, eyes, and ears. These people died even faster of this disease than the ones who had the first sickness. These diseases became widespread across the United States, with hundreds of thousands infected. Many died within a short time, perhaps 24 hours. The next section deals with the marauding gangs and chaos. As the people were fleeing, the cities of hope and saving their lives, in the hope of saving their lives, gangs were attacking and killing them in the towns that were struck with disease. There was chaos with looting, rioting and murders involved. A complete breakdown of society. Many people seemed to go crazy. I sensed that their electricity had failed everywhere and that nothing was operating throughout the country, including any of the communication systems. 
I watched people throw rocks through windows to steal TVs that would not work and thought it very strange. Take note that at this point in time there was no electricity anywhere. While I watched this all happening in the United States, my view instantly jumped back to the Middle East and I saw the same plagues transpiring in Israel, the same sores and the types of sickness and disease that were occurring in the United States had also been unleashed there. The next section deals with a long winter and famine. It should be noted at this point in time that it seems that there is an early winter starting in America. Um, Sarah says in her book that these events would begin by um, an early winter which would take people by surprise and that this early winter would take place in an election year of a second term of a president. The switch in view only lasted an instant and I was back to the United States. A tremendously long winter had caught everyone by surprise following the siege of sickness. It started early and lasted into the summer months. A famine had begun over the few years leading up to the long winter because of storms, droughts, floods and other plagues that had taken place. And the abnormally long cold winter period seemed to cause the famine to suddenly increase to its full measure. Not long after this period of time, following the diseases and long winter, events began quickly occurring in sequence, one right after the other. My sense of timing was not very clear at this moment because I was seeing several things happening all at the same time or very close together. During and after the long winter, the disease spread to ev in every state and increased in severity. The economy and electricity were completely gone. Chaos and anarchy reigned over the entire country because without any governmental structure there was a total breakdown. I saw people's hearts fail them from fear. Almost everyone was searching in desperate attempt to find some food. There was an extreme shortage everywhere, but in some areas there was no food at all. In these places I could see people so hungry they were digging in the ground for worms. I'd just like to add at this time that I do not know if these events are coming this year or next year or in the following year but these events are coming and we need to prepare and we need to prepare with plenty of time not hastily in the last minute because in that moment when that natural disaster happens it's too late within a day there will be no food in the shops within a day there can be no water Within a day, there can be no fuel to put in your car and you will be stranded wherever you are. So if you have any kind of wisdom, any kind of sense of preparation, emergency preparation, then you need to start filling bottles of water, store them under your bed, store them in your cupboards, have some food for emergency, for the sake of yourself, and for your family and your loved ones and even your friends. The next section is entitled Deadly Water. Also during this time I became aware that there was very little drinking water and that the remaining water had become contaminated. If a person drank it they would contact the disease and die. Because of their great thirst, many people drank the water in spite of the danger of poisoning. I mentioned earlier about the gangs that killed people trying to escape the cities. It seemed that some of them had lost their minds and went around in these gangs killing people just for the sake of killing. Others did so for food or to get, or to get gain some material possessions from their victims. victims. Those who were killing for no reason were like beasts, animals, completely out of control. 
as they raped, looted, burned and butchered people. I saw these gangs go into homes of those who were hiding and they would drag them out of their hiding places and commit unspeakable horrors. The same, these same events have been seen by others and I will share a vision of a different person with you later in this video. An unnatural fear and hatred came over many people, some family ties that once existed between husbands and wives and parents and children no longer mattered. They only cared about individual survival. Men would kill their wives and children for food or water. Mothers would kill their children. The events that then lay before me were horrible beyond description and almost unbearable to watch. Thus again the need for preparation in these last days. There is always hope. And so even though we know terrible events lie ahead, we can also have hope and we can know that if we are wise and we do prepare and if we do have faith in Jesus Christ and in our Heavenly Father, there, there will be a way for us to get through these times. And if we are not to get through these times, then it is the will of God that we, we go home. The next section is entitled Cities of Light and Safety. The air everywhere seemed to be filled with smoke as many buildings and cities burned with no one attempted, attempting to control the fires. As I looked upon the scene of chaos, smoke and destruction, I noticed that there were small pockets of light scattered over the United States, perhaps 20 or 30 of them. I noticed that most of the locations of light were in the western part of the United States with only three or four of them being in the east. These places of light seemed to shine brightly through the darkness and were such a contrast to the rest of the scene that they caught my full attention. I focused on them for a moment and asked, what is this light? I was then able to see that these points of light were people who had gathered together and were kneeling in prayer. Light it was actually coming from the people and I understood that it was showing forth their goodness and love for each other. They had gathered together for safety and contrary to what I had witnessed everywhere, were caring more for each other than for themselves. Some of the groups were small with only a hundred people or so. Other groups consisted of what seemed to be thousands. I realized that many, if not all, of these places of light or cities of light, as I began to think of them, had somehow been established just before most of the devastations, and that they were very organized. It was as if they had known what was coming and had prepared for it. I did not see who or what had organized them, but I did see many people struggling to reach them with nothing but what they could, could carry. In contrast to the outside areas, these cities of light had food that was readily shared with those who joined them. In these places there was relative peace and safety. The inhabitants were living in tents of all kinds, many of which were no more than blankets held up by poles. I noticed that the gangs made no threats on these groups and left them completely alone, choosing to pick on easier targets and unprotected people. Many were attacked who were trying to reach these cities. However, the people within had defenses and God was with them. I realized that these cities of light were temporary and that in a short time the people living within them would go to another place. I do not know where they were to go, but seemed to think that they were to gather in the mountains to higher places. Or the Rockies, possibly. We are now going to talk about a nuclear attack on the United States. While viewing the cities of light, my focus changed and became aware of missiles being launched and hitting the United States cities. I watched as mushroom clouds started forming over many areas of the state. Some of the clouds came from missiles and I knew were fired from Russia and others were not from missiles at all but from bombs that were already within the country. These latter bombs had been hidden in trucks and cars and were driven 
to certain locations and then detonated. Another man had a very powerful vision. He has made uh, six hours of videos speaking about this vision, speaking about a nuclear attack that would come from Russian and would um, be launched from submarines off the east coast of America. He simultaneously saw China attacking from the west coast. And so Sarah's vision has been verified by others who have, who have also had, had a similar vision or the same vision. She continues, I specifically saw Los Angeles, Las Vegas and New York City hit with bombs. New York City was hit with a missile, but I think, think Los Angeles was hit by at least one truck bomb, if not several, because it, I did not see any missile. I also saw a small mushroom cloud from form north of Salt Lake City without the aid of a missile. In the darkness, I also saw fireballs falling from the sky. This took place after the mushroom clouds. The balls fell from the sky, that fell from the sky were of different sizes, most being the size of golf balls and were very hot. There were millions of them and they fell from the sky. They left streaks of flame and smoke behind them. Everything they touched started on fire. People, building trees and grass, everything burned. I didn't ask what they were or where they came from because by this time I was sick over the scene before me. From year on I observed without asking many questions. At this point I'd like to add that many have had visions of fireballs coming out of the sky. Um, recently, if you search for YouTube, six or seven people have had these visions of fireballs coming and burning America. I do not know if this is related to um, some secret weapon that we do not know about or, or related to the nuclear attack, but certainly fireballs um, will fall out of the sky. Um, another event which people are talking about is a possible, a possible um, major CM, CME, CME blast from the sun. Um, Many scientists are anxious at this time uh, regarding the sun and many too have had a vision of a huge solar explosion which will have a devastating effect upon our earth. The next event is to do with uh, the invasion of North America. At almost the same time in the same locations as the mushroom clouds I saw Russian and Chinese troops invading the United States. The Russians were parachuting into many spots along the eastern coast and I also saw them parachuting into Utah. Chinese troops were invading from the west coast near Los Angeles and they were met with resistance from those who had survived the disease and the bombs. I did not see any United States military there at the time. This invasion was part of the nuclear war that I had seen earlier and I knew that similar events were taking place all over the world as I pre had seen previously. I did not see much of this war but was impressed that it was of short duration and that the Russian and Chinese armies were defeated and withdrew. No explanation regarding how, how or why was received. So even in the midst of the calamity that is coming and all that we know there is hope and if we are prepared if we have food if we have water if we have faith if we have the guidance and direction of the Spirit of God we can be led to safety and we can survive these calamities if it be the will of God The last events I will speak about which Sarah saw are entitled four more events. I then saw four additional events occur. One of these was a huge earthquake which occurred in the middle of the United States. It was tremendous and seemed to split the United States in half about where the Mississippi River is. 
The crack in the earth that resulted was huge, miles wide, and as it opened up, the earth seemed to swallow everything. Water flowed in from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes did, no, did no, not exist any longer, however, because they became part of a, of a large inland sea. At this point in time, I'd like to mention that many have seen um, recently and are expecting earthquakes on the west coast. Um, many have seen visions of earthquakes on the west coast and on the east coast. The earthquake she, she is talking about is related to the New Madrid Fault, which runs from the Great Lakes down to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, at this point in time, um, there is a lot of talk about a sinkhole um, down near the Gulf of Mexico, uh, which is causing a, a great deal of concern um, in America. It's called the Louisiana sinkhole. It, it seems as though a big hole is opening up and um, nobody quite knows what to expect. They do know that there are uh, flammable materials such as methane uh, down in this hole. Um, a man had a dream a few years ago where he saw an earthquake happen on the west coast and then simultaneously he saw an earthquake on the east coast and around about the same time he saw an enormous explosion he said he, he witnessed this from space in his dream he said the explosion was so large that it, it cannot even be described he said it was the biggest explosion that anyone could ever imagine I believe that this explosion uh, could be related to this Louisiana sinkhole. I believe that uh, the Louisiana sinkhole is located in that area near the Gulf where there are an enormous amount of flammable materials um, from, from the oil disaster. Um, in this area too there are an enormous amount of underground pipelines, etc., uh, carrying oil and, narrow, and natural gas. Um, pretty much all the way from the Gulf up the New Madrid fault line near the Missouri River up to the Great Lakes. It is possible that um, flammable, if there was an explosion in that area, um, it could ignite all these flammable substances which are under the ground and cause an enormous earthquake, uh, enormous explosion. Um, in his dream, he saw then at the same time uh, the, the ocean being sucked out and then a, a, a huge tsunami come in. Um, this could be the event he, he was seeing which would um, change the map of America and cause an inland ocean from the Gulf of Mexico um, up to the Great Lakes. In fact, the, um, the US Navy has um, already put out a map showing the new coastlines which has been showed by uh, various YouTube users. It's, it's a real map that does exist and uh, was uh, created by the US Navy. And so uh, we need to be aware of all these things that are happening and the only advice I can give is for you to be wise and to be prepared to have food and water which will be worth far more than bags and sacks of gold and silver, food and water and faith is what will get you what will get you through if it be the will of God and if it is not your time um, to leave this earth and to go home. Another event was a series of tremendous earthquakes all over the world. One in particular was a large worldwide quake that caused huge walls of water to sweep over all the coastal regions. This earthquake and the walls of water made the earlier one seem small by comparison. I'm not sure if the earthquake that split the United States in two was part of this worldwide quake or not. I also saw a mighty wind come upon the earth as the wind hit. I saw people go into caves and into the rocks, cracks of rocks and underground to try and escape its fury. It appeared to be stronger than any hurricane or tornado. It seemed that everything that had been left was now blown away. 
I understood without asking that the great earth, worldwide earthquake and the mighty wind were somehow caused by a huge planet-like object that had come very close to the earth and had disrupted everything. It was also made clear to me that it was very near the end when this happened. Now, as we know that um, this kind of event, which that will create um, terrible winds upon the face of the earth, um, will be the result of a, um, a shift in the earth's axis. When the, when the earth slips, uh, when the axis moves 90 degrees, this will cause the, the oceans to flow over the lands and uh, to cause huge tsunamis and also uh, the winds that she is talking about at this time and there there are videos explaining this on YouTube it's called the polar shift um, she also talks about a huge ball of fire the picture of the earth engulfed by this huge ball of fire uh, red and gold fire slowly faded away into blackness I realized at that moment that I had to go down and take care of my children so that they could be prepared for these terrible events that were going to happen. Everything that was shown to me came to a close, and then I woke up in hospital. As I said earlier on, um, Sarah Manette is not the only one who has seen these events. There have been others who have seen similar events. I don't think I will share um, I don't believe I will share any more at this time but I would again encourage you um, to prepare and the only way you can is to um, develop your spirituality and your faith to have food and water and whatever other supplies you, you can manage to keep together. Even if you keep them for a year or for two years or for three years, um, you will have them when the time comes. I pray that God will touch your hearts as you watch this video, as you have listened to some of these predictions and that you will not go away and not do anything about it but that you would make a resolution and um, take some action um, to prepare. So I wish you all well. God bless.